Oh. Barb has a wonderful idea of me coming in today just to kind of explain my job a little bit better um, and explain really what restorative justice is about and what a circle looks like. Um, so I would love, I, I don't want to keep this, I want to keep this as quick as possible because I know um, I, everybody takes time out of their day to come today. Um, but I did do a <coughs> circle with some students and I'd also love to do a circle tonight just so you guys can actually go through the motions. I think that's really important to actually feel it out. Um, but really, we do restorative circles for so many different things. Um, we do them to build up the community, we do them to solve problems, we do them um, to not solve problems, but like create solutions for things. So I know like Mrs. Applegate did um, circles last year when they were trying to figure out, okay, we we're going to put this new policy into place for our classroom. What do you guys think the expectations should be? So it's really just a way for the kids to be heard in any situation um, and to kind of share their thoughts on whatever's going on. Um, so we did a problem solving circle. I had some wonderful fourth graders come in and um, sit in and we we actually created together, we came up with this idea of what would be a realistic fourth grade problem. Um, and then they each kind of chose their parts and we went through that. So I'd like to start by showing you guys that um, because bigger problem solving is a lot of the like circles that I do, um, but it's just done a little bit better in like a smaller group than the setting. So we'll start with that. Yeah. I know Lainey and Brooke are super excited to see them. All right, so we are all here today because I heard that um, Brooke and Lainey, you guys were making fun of Brayden's soccer skills and you were trash talking him and he came to me and said he was feeling pretty hurt about that. So I thought we could do a circle today to try to resolve this problem. So before we, get, we begin, I just want to set down the guidelines. Um, I have the talking piece, so whoever is holding the talking piece, it's your turn to talk. I'm going to ask that if you're not holding the talking piece, you respect the person who is talking. Um, everybody will have a chance to share how they're feeling. And this is also a safe space, so what we talk about in here needs to stay in here today. Um, so when we leave this room, I'm going to ask that you leave all this in here. And if we need to continue talking about it, we can do that at another time. Is everybody good with those, those guidelines? Okay, so before we start, I want to do just a quick temperature check-in. Um, so I would like everybody to show me, just you can put your hand to your chest on a scale of one to five. One means you're feeling really great. Five means you're super, super oh mad about what happened today. Um, what temperature are you at right now? Four, a one, and a three. Okay. So we're going to do three rounds. Each time I'm going to give you guys about 15 or 20 seconds to share how you're feeling. Um, so let's start round one. Um, I just want to know what you feel like happened today and how that left you feeling. So, Brady, do you want to start? I feel like they trash talked me, and I think that they had no reason to trash talk me like they did. And how did that leave you feeling? Very sad. I, I'm just so confused. Like, I don't know why we were trash talking him and why we were just like yelling at him. And how did that how did that leave you feel? Feel like that? Um, really confused. Confused. So confused. I feel like Brayden should have better soccer school skills and not like our team leagues. Right. How are you feeling right now? Bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this next time, I want you to really t just take a minute and really think about how your actions made the other people in this room feel, and maybe just kind of be honest about what you should have done a little bit differently to help the situation. Okay, so Brayden, would you like to go? Yeah, I think that, like, I shouldn't have, like, acted the way I did and got, like, all sad. I should have said, okay, well, I can easily just go practice and, like, learn better moves and, like, make my moves that I already know better. Um, I think that we should just teach them some better moves so we don't cause a bigger, like, cause something even bigger than this. I think instead of making fun of these moves, we can just help one with them. And then it'll be all over. Okay. All right, so last round is moving forward to make sure that this doesn't happen again. I want to know what your plan is. It sounds like there's um, kind of already a plan started to help Brady with his moves and work together as a team. 
Um, but is there anything you think you can add just to make sure we don't have an issue like this again in the future? Like, I'll learn my like, better moves in so like, that I can play on their soccer team and like not make them lose because today, like, I didn't play real good because I was under the weather. So maybe I could practice some more moves in. Um, I think that, like, instead of him talking bad about himself, we can just, like, teach him moves and uh, tell him how to play nicer, and, yeah. I think we should just be better sports about everything. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, I'm going to close by saying that um, I appreciate everybody being respectful of each other and being honest about how you're feeling. And um, I do think, definitely think about how we're affecting others and being good sportsmanship or showing good sportsmanship and using our words to um, talk to each other instead of just getting mad is definitely key here. Mm -hmm. So can I just do a quick check in? Um, thumbs up, you're feeling good about how this issue is resolved. Thumbs down, you think there's still issues. How do you feel? All right, sounds good. And as you know, if you have any more issues, we can always come back together and talk. Before I run a circle, I pull every student aside individually to make sure that they are okay. So the last thing I want to do is bring a couple hot kids into a room together mm -hmm. to try to like solve problems they're not ready to solve. So I always do individual check-ins, and I also typically will kind of hear them out individually first. That way, if I I want to get an idea of what we're coming into and make sure I kind of have a way to guide it. Um, so if there is something specific I want to make sure we touch on, I can I can kind of help the kids work through that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't just bring them home. So. so does anybody have any comments so far about, would you guys like to practice a circle? <laughs> Do you have any thoughts about it? About restorative <laughs> justice, about the practice or anything? I, mean, I like, I like mm -hmm. how you like give every, every child a chance mm -hmm. to say what they want and then is that a stuffed animal they're holding? Or? Yes. But I like that too, just mm -hmm. kind of gives them something else to focus on instead of like staring at the person and saying, hey, I'm at you, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a nice, it's a nice distraction. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I do find, I actually, I have a couple of them. I do the octopus a lot because the tentacles, the kids will sit and fidget, mm -hmm. but, but I feel like sometimes they're more honest when really they have that. something to hang on to. Yeah, I really like that. I was thinking I should do that with my kids. <laughs> 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 I was thinking we should do this in my job. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing we do. <laughs> There's no age limit on restorative So um, this is something that they could practice with um, when siblings, because mm -hmm. probably Absolutely. none of your siblings fight, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that is something that they could practice with that too. And the temperature thing, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I like to kind of that way it gives me an idea too of like, okay, who's really mad? Who's mm -hmm. who's okay with what's going on? Um, just so if one kid is a little bit hot and and. and in this situation, because it was acted, we did the straight round robin. But I've also had before where the kids were being really respectful, so I kind of let them popcorn the talking piece around, mm -hmm. and then I would just kind of raise my hand to take it back when I felt I needed to come back in. Um, but usually, I let them popcorn a little bit, and then I'll I'll make sure I wrap up with a couple um, actual rounds to make sure every kid gets there. You know, I I know exactly where they stand by the end. Um, but this, I do find the kids really run this well for the most part. Um, it makes them feel heard. And I'd say the majority of the time, the kids are very respectful with the talking piece and the structure about hearing each other out. Um, even if they don't disagree, I might kind of see them like, like make a face or like a little bit, but then they get that talking piece and they get their chance to kind of share their thoughts on whatever's happening. So, can I just say, it? Um, I really wanted to be at Brundle because they have so many good things in place and this is really helpful for the kids' social-emotional learning mm -hmm. to be able to resolve conflicts um, and really walk away becoming friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they have the mindfulness here and she does the restorative justice and so there's a lot of good things in place for the kids, to, students to really develop the social-emotional learning that they need. So. Another piece of her job that she's not talking about is she is on a cycle in every classroom, every grade level. Um, that she teaches um, 
a strategy for either conflict resolution or expressing themselves. So that's outside of circles, so that they actually have the experience of doing eye messages or um, self-regulation is an yeah. early one that we do. That's you see a lot of us learning this. Mm -hmm. I think all of us do. She teaches the kids how when you're feeling hot, how mm -hmm. you, what strategies you have to lower that. So she's like working in layers, so that when you come to a conflict circle, mm -hmm. you've got some background mm -hmm. for how to actually work through it. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm about to start cycle five <coughs> lessons, so I see every, I, each class, um, I see the whole school within a two week cycle. So every, every class gets me for 20 minutes every other week. So. Them. And the teachers don't walk out, they watch yeah, it, they so that the teachers know how to extend it on their own in the classroom. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. Shalee has, you want to talk a little about your piece role? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I have a piece table that um, I started last year, and it's very similar to their sort of circle. The kids can go um, at any time they need to if they have a conflict with um, one another. Um, we started out by reading um, the Peace Rose story to kind of introduce it. Um, and on the peace table, there's a, a yellow rose and a vase, which I have to give you a vase because I just told somebody that it, this glass vase is not broken in two years and it broke. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I need to get a new one. Um, but I also have a binder that has pictures of children. Um, and then with different feelings and then the words too so just in case they don't understand or recognize how they're feeling um, there's a mirror there too so they can look in the mirror if they need to look at their face um, and then how it works is they, they use eye, eye messages back and forth um, and the roses are talking piece so whoever has the rose can talk um, and then there's a journal that's left there and a special pen um, so when they're finished, they can, if they have any final thoughts, or sometimes it's just, just an I forgive you, or maybe it's a picture, um, they can journal about it too. And they can go there at any time, and that's really worked wonders, especially for the, the things that they would normally tattle about, <laughs> but they can work out by themselves. So, And I'm also going to um, toot Chalet's horn a little bit too, like so many times I've mm -hmm. gone into her room or passed by and I can hear her saying, okay, wait. Let's take a moment and find your mindful bodies. And I do have cocoa breath with the kids. So you breathe in through their nose and breathe out through the mouth. And it's this whole thing we do with them. And she has really embraced that. And a lot of the teachers have. I know it's not just Chalet. Um, and I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. I think it's made a difference. Oh, I think it's, it's made a difference. The kids have that tour. They'll come to me and say, let's do some hot cocoa breath. And even if they're mad, okay. And, you know, just taking that minute. Um, yeah, in fact, we, um, part of... The piece table that I didn't say is we've come up kind of like with a class pledge and we every year I've, and I've looped with this group so um, I had them last year for first grade and we had our own little pledge and expectations that we came up with so we did that again this year and they actually added be mindful and present to with it to that because that's, that's awesome. really important um, mm -hmm. to them and they did that all on their own I didn't have to lead them to that but yeah, it's something yeah. that they're all embracing. That is I know that Riley has, <laughs> our daughter has really brought that into her world and been a little helpful for that mm -hmm. one, even with the, uh, the temperatures we use at a home, like, are you red right now, are you yellow? Or, mm -hmm. So that really has helped her to kind of, I mean, she she does yeah. it on her own. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot yeah. of it. So. Yeah. Um, so it's up to you guys. We can either sit and do a circle, or I can just kind of briefly go through kind of exactly what the pieces are in case you do want to take it home with your kids. Well, your circle is going to be about welcoming a new student. Yeah. So, so my idea was we could we could mock up a circle where we have a new student coming into class next week, and so we want to kind of work through what that's going to look like. So um, if you guys are willing, I'd love to I'd love to get in around and. Go through the process. We're getting a new student on Monday, and so I really want to make sure that our new student is feeling welcome. Um, so I just like to kind of talk through what that's <coughs> going to look like. Um, and then I set out my guidelines, so I always let students know that um, this is a safe space, so whatever is talked <coughs> about in here, we want to keep in here to respect everybody's <coughs> feelings. Um, and we are also going to have our talking piece, so we respect whoever is talking. Um, holding the piece is the person that gets to talk, and if you are not holding the talking piece, I'm going to ask that you hold <coughs> your comments, and I promise everybody will get a chance to have the talking piece and share how they're feeling. Um, so then I would do a check-in, so for today I'm going to say, 
Um, you know, on a scale of one to five, one being you're, you're not nervous at all, you're pretty excited, and five being you're really nervous. Um, just on your chest, give me one, two, three, four, five. How are you feeling about a new student joining our community next week? So excited up to nervous. And this way, students can also kind of look around and gauge how their peers are feeling about whatever situation is going on as well. Great. So um, today we're just going to do two short rounds. Um, so the first one, I want you to think about um, a time when maybe um, what what might um, the new student be feeling nervous about. Um, we want to try to put ourselves in their shoes and just kind of think through what something you think they might be nervous about. So Mrs. Katz, if you would like to start. <laughs> So I'm talking about when I was nervous about something. It could be new. own experience or what, if you don't have an experience, what you think they might be feeling. Well, when I knew someone, I'm super nervous that I'm going to get lost. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> 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 I, can I, I actually got lost when I went to school in Ireland, and it was really scary. And a teacher took me in her room as a mommy. So that is my thing that I'm afraid I'm going to go to the wrong classroom. I guess I would be afraid that people are gonna judge my haircut. <laughs> I think they'll be nervous that they're not gonna make any new friends. Mm -hmm. Nervous that nobody will like me. Mm -hmm. I think they might be nervous that they don't know where anything our classroom is. The same as Mrs. Porto, just that no one is going to like them. The same as Mrs. That everybody already has friends and I'm not going to be able to fit in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder how I had the friend thing. Um, or I'm going to come to class and I'm going to be at a different level of learning. Anyone else's. Mm -hmm. If I was a new student, I would be afraid that I wouldn't have friends and it would take a long time to make friends. Mm -hmm. Worried that I might not know what time lunch is over. That was my daughter's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want the teacher to talk, call me up and introduce me to the class. Mm -hmm. I think that new person might be worried that the teacher is going to be mean. Mm -hmm. Uh, just feeling like I fit in. Nervous that I'm going to have to explain myself over and over again. <laughs> um, maybe taking the bus or riding the bus. Mm -hmm. I might be nervous about where to sit in the lunchroom. Mm -hmm. okay, and I'm going to say um, be nervous about knowing my schedule um, because mm -hmm. that's what it's functioning. Alright, so we heard I heard a lot of getting lost, friendship issues, <coughs> academic issues, teacher worries. Um, so this round I want to focus on what we can do to try to help the students transition. So if you could come up with one idea, um, and you might have seen some of we do that when we agree, if you do want to agree, this is kind of the symbol we use to say like yes, I agree with that. Um, but I would like you to share something that you feel like you could do to help our new student feel welcome in our classroom. I'd like to be a buddy for the first couple of days when we are going to specials and lunch and whenever we're going somewhere so that, that he or she knows where to go. I'm going to show he or she where the bathroom is. <laughs> yes, just to kind of reiterate what Ms. Gutt said, just be there to help out. Mm -hmm. Be a friend for the new student. I would ask the new student if I could help them with anything if they had a question. I would share my supplies with the new student in mm -hmm. case they didn't have something. Mm -hmm. I will show them around the classroom so they know where all of our supplies are and where everything is in our classroom. I would invite them to do my classroom job with me. I would say something kind to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, if I were the teacher maybe, um, if they had like an outstanding student or out you know more outspoken to kind of buddy with them so that they're on the same level versus like you know the principal or something <coughs> might be scary but 
Um, I'm going to agree with having a friend or make sure the new um, student has someone to go to lunch with or to sit with. Um, I would make sure that I introduce them to all of my friends and include them when we're playing outside and things like that. Mm -hmm. I would help them to learn the Brendel Pledge so that they can be up to speed um, faster. <laughs> um, I would just stand next to them when they're afraid. I'm going to help them pick the good lunches. I would uh, show them the peace table. I would try not to ask them too many questions about where they're from. I would try to find something that we haven't had in, so I can let to them. <coughs> I might ask them to play with me on the playground at recess. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so then I would just say, um, I'd like everyone to give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you feel like you have a way to help our new student feel welcome and you have a plan for when they show up next week? And so if things are in the chest, thumbs down. A couple sideways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just remember it's really hard being new and um, it can be really nerve wracking, but let's try to make this first week really exciting and welcoming for our new friend. And so that's pretty much the gist of the circle. Just making sure everybody gets their chance to be heard. So you can play um, you can kind of test this when you uh, go home if you agree with something your child says, then this is this mm -hmm. you do this and you get a big Where did you Oh my gosh, right? So, so you're cueing the same thing you get in school. <laughs> I had a question. My daughter does something like this, like when something is like distracting or someone's talking or trying to, I don't know, it's just her class or? It, 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 it could like just be her class. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was like, like, like hey, she does it, you know, just like a 30 circle or there's a sermon or something like that. Okay. Well, she works with a lot of the syllabus. So she does have signs that she uses with them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she'll do that. And that's kind of like you're distracting me instead of interrupting, you know. I wondered if that was part of that or, you know, but I, don't I thought that was I'm going to take that on because that's yeah, great. Yeah, because it really asked me what this meant. Okay, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So they're definitely yeah. doing these things and showing mm -hmm. us, too. They're, they're called talk moves, mm -hmm. and there's a set that is pretty typical, and this is one of them, like my brain to your brain, I agree with you. So then the kids aren't flirting. They're just showing, and it's great for a teacher to see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the same. This means yellow if you turn it, but this means same, so same thinking, mm -hmm. same if you're talking about something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's add on, mm -hmm. um, I can't remember all of them. An action, yeah, and I really like this because you'll see the kids, like, mm -hmm. they'll gesture like this, mm -hmm. and then sometimes you'll see, you know, and they're like, yeah, it's fun to see, like, all that fun, positive activity, so. Miss Hardy, I was going to ask you, how do the conflicts come to you? Is it like the teachers bring down a group of kids that are having conflict, or how does it um, It depends. It, it happens all different ways. So um, sometimes the students come right to me. Um, the best case, they usually will check in with teachers just to kind of see, okay, have you felt this out? So it's, I just like to have the whole, like I said, the whole picture before bringing them together. Um, sometimes Mrs. Getz will ask me to do a circle. <coughs> Sometimes it's kids that I have I've worked with a couple times and I say, okay, this is an ongoing issue. So I think it's time for us to do a circle to try to really get to the bottom of like, why do you two keep having problems? So really, it, it all different ways. Um, and mm -hmm. I just take it on and we run with it. Yeah. Did anybody else have any questions? Sorry, I sat right down. Mm -hmm. <laughs>